The data here shows the calculated values of a chemotaxis index for three levels of pretreatment at levels 0, 1 and 2. We wish to perform an ANOVA analysis using this data, but first of all we, sh we wish to check whether it satisfies the normality and the homogeneity of variance conditions. But in fact, the simplest way of testing whether it will fit these conditions for the ANOVA is actually in SPSS to run the ANOVA itself and to analyze the residuals in the analysis. So we would analyze general linear model, univariate, in this case the dependent variable is the C index, the fixed factor is the treatment. We wish to save the residuals from this calculation so we will click save and we will select under residuals standardized residuals. We can also perform the test for equality of variance directly under options and we will click for the homogeneity tests and click OK. We see directly the test for the equality of variances, Levine's test, and this gives a p-value of 0 0.845 which suggests that the equality of variance condition has been satisfied. Out of interest at this point we can look at the results of the ANOVA calculation which suggests that the treatment factor has got a p-value of less than 0 0.0005 showing it is highly significant suggesting that there is a difference between a, at least two of the levels of treatment but we still need to confirm the normality conditions to validate this result so we now look back at our data file and we can see that the running the ANOVA we have saved the residuals here under the variable ZRE1 this gives the residual for each of the experimental measurements. We now need to test for the normality of the distribution of these residuals. And to do this, we will analyze descriptive statistics and we will use explore. We are looking for the distribution of residuals. So we click these across to the dependent list. We also want to look at a normality plot, so we will click plots and we will click normality plot with tests, continue. We see the statistics of the residual variable and we can see that the values for skewness and kurtosis are both less than one standard error, which suggests that the the values are not significantly different from the expected values of zero for a normal distribution. In addition, we see the tests for normality, Kolmogorov, Smirnov and Shapiro Wilkes, both show p-values which are greater than 0 0.05, which suggests that the requirement for normality has been met. In addition, we can look at the normality plot, which shows that the residuals closely follow the diagonal, which is the condition for a true normal distribution. Finally, we can view the variation of residuals for the different levels of treatment. And for this, we will go to graphs, legacy dialogues, and we will do a scatter graph using a simple scatter, and we will define it. And to do this, we will put our residuals on the y-axis, for the different levels of treatment, which we will put on the x-axis, so that we can see how the residuals are spread out for each of the three levels, 0, 1, and 2, for the three levels of treatment. And we can see that the spread is relatively similar for the three levels, which confirms the fact that Levine's test said that there was no significant differences between them. And overall, we can see that the data satisfies the requirements for both normality and equality of variance, and we can accept 
the significant result for the ANOVA calculation that we saw earlier.